Hey, 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 it's Wednesday. It's eight o'clock in the East Coast. That means it's time for this week at Gear Report, the weekly show where we talk about everything that's been published on GearReport.com since the last show a week ago, and talk about upcoming uh, things that will be published, events, all of that kind of jazz. So, this is a special show this week because it's the first time I have actually gone out and done something that I very, very, very rarely do if I don't absolutely have to. And that is I spent some money. Uh, we upgraded to the paid version of StreamYard. That's the tool that we use to broadcast these shows so that we can, uh, what would it be? Simulcast? Multi-stream? I don't know. I'm going to call it multi-stream. So we're sending this to the gear report youtube channel like we normally do what's up oh i'm telling you what's up snob pay attention brother uh what's up is that we are multicasting not only to the youtube channel but also to facebook live as well so um yeah and i was just harassing him because i like to harass the gun snob um i don't know why he's a good guy i don't know why i harass him but uh but i do it's a character character flaw, I think. Uh, anyhow, we're we're also live on Facebook as well. So we thought, you know what? Let's see if we can uh, serve another part of the audience that doesn't really do YouTube. So, so there we go. We're gonna try to uh, we're we're gonna try it out. And see what happens. First one in this week, as usual. Buck, the gun loving grandpa. Uh, good to see a buck. And um, Boba's brother, Hancho, also majestic hammock hello hello to you as well let's see who else do we have out there we already saw the gun snob i think that is everyone we, we've gone through to see uh who's out there so far thanks for joining us oh things have gotten a little foul if i may say so <laughs> the bird and all that all right good to see you gizzard gary uh, it's always nice when we're not competing with gary because, uh, you know, there goes our audience when that happens. Uh, let's see. Today is, uh, we we confirmed this. Uh, Mitch and I confirmed this right before going live that today is actually the third. So that means our last show. Oh, the computer is fighting with me here. I'm trying to get the calendar thing to open. Uh, the last show would have been on the 24th. So we're going to go back through on the uh, main gear report page and see where we need to start that would have been the advantages of a gun safe we got a kind of neat one that we'll talk about with a museum tour and then we did a live broadcast last night we're going to talk about that as well but first why don't we hear from uh, my partner in crime this evening mitch hello everybody welcome to the show hope you're geared up ready to go ha <laughs> ha <laughs> yeah oh excited that's clever that's clever uh mitch is on fire this evening that's it thanks for being here mitch i appreciate you you got it buddy ah mr bradley how you doing man Brad, brad's just on the other side of town from me so and wait a second tj's not here but his wife is hmm I wonder what's going on there. Crystal, can you make sure TJ knows we have a show this evening? I think he's playing hooky on us. All right. So let's see. Let's dive in. And oh, you know what? I got another. I'm going to call it an announcement. I told you that um, TJ is the hooky man. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe he's got a track meet or practice or something because he is a coach, right? And we give people slack when they're doing things that support our youth. He's playing basketball. Okay, that's not supporting our youth. That's probably more like fouling and dunking on our youth. Um, but you know what? I'll allow it. It's okay. Uh, that, that's good enough. So uh, I, I made the announcement that we're also broadcasting on Facebook Live. What I didn't tell you is how we're paying for that. I said I spent some money on it. What I didn't mention is that we have secured a sponsor for this week at Gear Report, 
and they're actually going to pick up the tab for the streaming. So we really appreciate. I know a lot of people say don't jinx it and make an announcement on a sponsor until um, until the check shows up. But you know what? I, they're good people at Riton Optics. I am sure that when they said, yeah, yeah, we'll sponsor, send us an invoice, that that's going to get paid. They're they're working on some graphics and video to send us over to include uh, in the show. And I'm sure that the check is in the mail uh, at some point as well. Uh, I feel like it's a good deal for everyone involved. Riton Optics are good people. We've worked with them for a few years on a variety of reviews, hung out with them down there at, at the Fire Expo in Florida at the end of January had a good time. So um, I'm really looking forward to that partnership and seeing what cool things we can do together. So that was, that's the big exciting news. It's got me kind of jazzed up today. So let's see, let's go down to share the screen. And I got to tell you about the AAF tank museum. This place is cool. So uh, I don't I don't know how many people know that I've been involved with scouts for decades and um, recently uh, took over as the the skipper, the head adult leader of the local Sea Scouts unit um, in the off season when it's too cold to get the boats out and do water based activities. We do other things. The scouts said they wanted to go to the tank museum. So we took them there and I documented that for everyone. Uh, so if you want to see some obscenely cool stuff, uh, check out this article. It is chock full of pictures. I've got some videos where not all of the things were really conducive to doing video. Uh, they allowed it. It's just, you know, the way things were set up in the museum. Some things I could walk around them and get video. Other things you could really only get a picture from the front. And, you know, so so it's mainly pictures. I've got pictures and um, little spec sheets for uh, many of the vehicles that we saw at this museum. And I'm going to work on, I probably got five or 10 different videos. I got to see what turned out okay that are just kind of silent minute, minute, minute and a half walk arounds to show you some of these really obscenely cool vehicles, uh, full blown tanks, uh, half tracks, APCs. They have so much stuff there. They got a machine gun room that, you know, good, bad, or indifferent. I was going to say, sadly, I don't know. It's going to be good for someone that uh, all of the guns in that room are being sold as a lot to an auction house, you know, that's going to get rid of them for them soon. They even have some toy things there. I, I ended up buying some uh, Humvee parts while I was there. They don't even have Humvees, but uh, but I ended up buying uh, ba basically an antenna mount and, and, and some other, uh, and an intercom box while I was there. Uh, anyhow, you can see all that stuff in this article, and I'm still scrolling. The whole time we've been talking, I keep scrolling. Lots of obscenely cool stuff in there, like this little British Daimler Dingo Scout car. I'd never seen one of those before. I'm thinking I need to find one. Um, those look really obscenely cool. Um, so anyhow... Go check that out if you have any interest in that kind of thing. Keep an eye out. I'm going to try to get some of those little quick kind of walk around videos posted from the trip. Thanks for the article. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, yes, that is in Danville, Virginia. Uh, so, Bradley, if you haven't been up to that one, go check it out soon because um, Bill, the, the owner of the museum, uh, he was telling me that he has already contracted with, uh, is it Rock Island, the auction company, to liquidate their entire weapons room, which is all of the various different types of machine guns. So if you want to get a look at those, get up there quick and check them out one weekend. And you said, let's go. You know, I've already been. So I think you're going to have to go by yourself this time. Uh, hey, Jason's with us. Sort of. There he is. Okay. He, he was frozen for a second. And I thought, oh, does that mean he's back in Jackson Hole again, where it's, you know, super cold and he's frozen? But I think it was just a video thing. 
All right. Good to see you. Jason has submitted uh, some videos that I haven't gotten to edit and post yet. So I apologize for that. But uh, just understand there's some good Humvee videos coming uh, that he's put some time and effort into, and they're still in my editing queue. And we'll talk about that in the what's coming section here shortly. Uh, right now, just a quick, we're going to kind of scroll through this because the people who are interested are, are going to like it. The people who don't know anything about Philmont Scout Ranch or uh, or that kind of thing really wouldn't have any interest in this. It's a live stream we did last night. Very, very well attended. We had great interaction, lots of people, lots of uh, questions coming in, and we covered a variety of, of different types of information that people need to learn about the campsites uh, when they go on a trek up there um, to learn where to get the information about the campsites, what the protocols are for going from one to the other, all kinds of cool stuff there. It's about an hour and nine minutes. If that kind of thing is interesting to you and you missed it live, then check out the article and scroll down to the video. You can watch that Q&A uh, where we had a couple experienced trekkers in there and, and then me just for color. Um, so yeah, if that's interesting to you, please go check that out. Oh, look at that party people is that us i think that's us <laughs> yes yeah that reminds me you know what i don't know i can't even say that because this is a kid-friendly show you know what i'm gonna say it anyway one of my back back when i was young and dumb and did things i probably shouldn't one of the favorite things that i that i heard sometimes was where are the party people at i'm gonna tell you where i heard that okay because that's where we get inappropriate but yeah i used to be part of the party people I'm, I'm more of the stay up and edit video people now. All right. So, uh, Jason, how you been, man? I've been doing well. I've been uh, flying all over the country and uh, seeing yeah. lots of cool things. But uh, it's nice to be home and relaxing with the family. Got to play with my truck today. And, yeah. Uh, winter's been rough on her. Yeah, winter winter's rough in general, I think. What in the world? Honcho, come on. Well, at least I'm not, you know, being the the, the chance to fire Jeff have died down in the, in recent months. So that's good. Back when you had a mullet. I, okay, so I'm gonna try to remember to go dig up some pictures. I had glorious flowing locks at one point. Um so yeah, I don't have them on this computer or I'd share them with you because I'm telling you, there's not much up here now, but it used to be spectacular. So uh, while, while some people might, uh, might hide from their past in terms of, you know, poor judgment of how they, how they did their hair. Hey, I had it. I, I'm happy to show it off. I, I just don't have it here. Jose Juan has joined us as well. Look at that. How's it going? I'm I'm trying to get the computer going at the same time, and uh, yeah, I see that. It says device is not connected. Yeah, there's something going on with it. It's not working right. So I'm using the phone on the side. So that's probably gonna have to be it for today. You know what's fine? That's fine. Just don't move it too much because I'm getting seasick. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry. Hold on. I'm I'm trying to figure out which which one's gonna work. So. I'm gonna close the computer stuff and and then just do the do the chat on the phone. So how's okay. it going? Okay. Um, uh, what is this? Is that picks like your hair? Not here at the moment. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Uh, let's see. Fifty's hitting the hairline pretty hard. Yeah, man. I, I got to tell you, I'm not too far from that myself, but, but my hairline's been going for a while. Um, I, I will admit, though, the reason it really doesn't bother me, I, number one, not really anything I can do about it anyway. Number two, my brother's four years younger than me. His hair went a whole lot quicker. That's all I need. You know, I really don't care. As long as, as, long as I kept my hair longer than him, I'm happy. And I did. So, right. Jeff, they said if you uh, lose the hair in the front, you're a wise man. If you lose the hair in the back, 
you are a good lover. The problem is when the two meet, you think you're a good lover. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I figure I got so much activity going up in the brain bucket here that it just kind of overheated and burned all the air off. Or at least that's that's the idea I'm going with. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's something happening in the private chat. Oh, that's just people having greetings. Okay. Uh, I'm seeing lots of comments from YouTube. There's actually a couple that came in from Facebook as well. So it looks like that is probably functioning well. Uh, if anyone's got any feedback on that, since this is the first time we've really done this kind of simulcast, uh, please let us know how it looks, uh, if it looks okay, sounds okay, that kind of thing. Uh, we've exhausted the published content. Well, yo, and stuff to you, Defense Dad, as well. Good to see you, man. Oh, yeah, click the thumbs up button. That's a good idea. And what's the other one? To, to subscribe. If you're on YouTube, subscribe. Give us a thumbs up or a like on Facebook or whatever, if you want to. I mean, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm, I'm kind of asking. So we covered everything. Everything's been published. I have been super busy. We got a couple things in the queue. I can tell you that something upcoming in the queue from the Rogue Banshee is going to be... What was it? It was like a vibratory primer sorter or something. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. I saw that it's in the queue. I opened it. I didn't actually get to read it and publish it yet. That will be published very soon. I know Jason's got a video or three that's in the queue that I will get to shortly, um, hopefully within the next few days. So uh, we know those things are coming. What else do the folks here on the panel have coming? Anything that, that's in the works? We can kind of go Mitch, Jason, JJ, if there's anything. Yeah, I've been a complete slacker, and I will admit it. I will own it. Um, I just started a new job, so I'm hoping to kick some new articles in um, once I get everything kind of set up. But uh, it's an interesting that I'm going to be working directly with uh, law enforcement. So my job is going to entail – some direct contact and I'm going to try and utilize some of those contacts as well because we deal a lot with those law enforcement agencies. So all over the U S um, but anyway, I digress. Uh, my initial article that I was working on that I still haven't really put up for you to review yet is uh, about the um, firearm legal protection and comparing those, I did see that there was a, an article that ghost did some time ago and I wanted to kind of look at some of other articles that people have done and kind of update it with new information, new gotcha. new companies and new services. Just yep. just to put that out there, just anybody's interested. Yeah, that is out. interesting. And you know, my yes. my um, my priority for you is you know sort out all your employment stuff. Make sure you get a good uh, footing there and do what you need to. And uh, there is no pressure on this end. We appreciate whatever. Whatever you can fit in, but uh, take care, take care of the family and and the gainful employment, and uh, everything else will fall into place. Yeah, that's great news, Mitch. Uh, glad to hear that that you found a, a job already, and and uh, we've been thinking about you all this all the time. So so good deal. Thanks, guys. All right, Jason, how are things uh, progressing? What what kind of fun stuff should we expect from you here shortly? I still have uh, that kinetic toe strap that I'm going to uh, try. And I think I got a bunch of guys getting together this weekend. So maybe I could see if I could pull some other Humvees with it. And uh, so uh, weather's getting nice. So uh, we'll see what uh, it can do. I'm excited. It was something like 17 or 18,000 pound capacity. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll uh, put it to its test. Yeah, those are pretty neat because, uh, you know, I was always told we, we would just use regular toe straps back in the day. And sometimes you get a run and start and, man, you could yank the bumper off of something or, or you know, really hurt someone. But now they actually design them to have a little bit of stretch so that you uh, it, it kind of softens the blow and yanks the, the vehicle out a little bit more. Um, uh, with, with a bit more authority, I think. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how that works out for you. 
it's pretty cool to see uh, some of the professional videos and actually see them pull it out and the tension that gets on the cable before it just pops you right out of the hole. And like mm -hmm. you said, you're not doing a running start. So uh, it's using a little science to uh, help you out on the uh, trail. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Science and stuff. I like it. All right. Well, I got a couple of things that are that I'm touching up and stuff, but I'm not finished on them yet. But um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of a little bit on the uh, same s s stock situation that Mitch is in. Other other than Mitch is because of a new job. I'm I'm you know doing a couple of other things and uh, but yeah, um, s sometime along the way I'm gonna finish those articles that I have and send them on to Jeff and and you guys will see them. All right. Well, we will look forward to that. Uh, I want to share some news. Some of the team may have gotten an email about this already. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. The event in uh, May? What is it, April? Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to share the screen here. Oh, wrong button. Share, and we'll go to email. And I am going to show you the invitation email we just got <coughs> from our friends down in Georgia, the Iraq veteran 8888 crew. Um, this is the, uh, it, it's an email that, that we've been waiting on. The annual Iraq Veteran 8888 Range Day is one of the fun events that we typically go to. I love it at Gear Report because we um, we're it's close enough for most of us who are in uh, Central North Carolina in the area that it it makes a really great event to take new people to to get them ready to go to something bigger like a shot show. Uh, lots of brands show up. We do a lot of shooting. We hang out with a, a ton of other content creators, and it's a really fun time. My favorite location that they've done it, because they've moved it around some the past few years, is Red Hill Range in Martin, Georgia. Uh, Chris, that runs the um, runs that range, is a super guy, and he has a really neat little facility. And we'll set up our command tent and camp on site there and just have a really fun weekend. So um, I don't know if anyone noticed that the uh, the logo for this stream. Uh, I wonder if I can get that up here somehow. That logo was actually taken at that show a couple years ago uh, when we had a command tent set up. Let me go back and share this screen. And let's see, we'll stop that one and we'll share the this week at Gear Report. So if you weren't aware, every week when we do this show, it goes in the archive. It's an article. Um, you can go under live shows this week at Gear Report, and you'll see all of them in kind of reverse chronological order. So the current show uh, will be up at the top. And then as you scroll down, it's not loading. There it is. It's, it's slowly loading here, the thumbnail for this week's show. And if it ever finishes loading, you will see it's us sitting inside the command tent uh, at the IV 8888 a couple years ago at that event. There we go. So we look forward to that because it is at an outdoor range and we, and we camp at it. The camping team will typically go uh, as well as military vehicles. You see here, we got TJ for, and Toby from firearms, Chris from the camping department, Ruben from the military vehicles team. He typically brings a decked out Humvee with him. So that's going to be a pretty cool event. And, and you saw from that email that it will be in May this year. Typically they do it later in the uh, fall, but this, this year it's going to be May. So I'm looking forward to that. That's a really cool, fun event for us to go to. I'm hoping that, uh, some more of the team can make it uh, to this one as well. All right, folks. That's, we that, that's always that's always a pretty cool event. Honestly, it's a little bit more laid back. It's, it's truly more for for the content creators to go over and have fun in Iraq, hang out um, and shoot. Uh, um, yeah, it's it's definitely one of the better ones. Um, 
Yeah, for us, it, it's definitely um, pretty cool in that regard. Let's see. TJ, play nice. Looking forward to the, a match in Florida. Cool. 3D luck. Well, that's cool. Um, well, good. Good. Yeah, for everyone who's getting out there and, and doing things, uh, I hope they go well for you. And uh, and I hope that you're able to find everything you need. Um, I know I was talking to Caleb uh, in our hunting department. Um, he's looking for ammo just like everyone else. And, hey, do you have any connections? I'm like, man, I, I don't have connections. But I have been sitting on some ammo um, and this is a recurring discussion we've had that I've been waiting until I can retire when I sell it and, uh, prices haven't got quite high enough for that. So I've been holding on to it, but I think we're in the right neighborhood. So I may let some, uh, some 45 ACP and some 308 go here pretty soon. So if anyone needs that and, uh, and you got lots of money, let me know. I'm your guy. I can hook you up as long as it's legal to sell to you, which hey. I think most people are in free states. What about the tents? Those are also up, tents, right? Yeah, yeah. The tents. Uh, I got a bunch of tents ready to go. Um, we got them all packed up, and Jason's is is still sitting there and ready to go. Uh, it's it's been waiting for me to get some Humvee parts together, which I'm hoping early next week. It it keeps. It, it's close to the top of my list. I've almost uh, like every time I go out to to do it, something pops up. Uh, like, for example, it occurred to me last time I went to Florida, I got a ticket. And I a month after I got that ticket, I remembered, oh, yeah, I think I got a ticket a, a month ago. I wonder when the court date is. So I just realized that I have to get the van inspected and uh, and probably get an attorney to go, go to court for me because it's like halfway across the state. And I don't want to go myself. So. So I got to do that tomorrow uh, because that court dates next week. And then because um, they, they love when someone from out of state rolls through the county and they can set up a speed trap and nail you, um, you know, the North Carolina State Highway Patrol, which I think should be aligned under the Revenue Department, because that's pretty much all they're good for is extorting money out of people. But, um, yep, this is how I roll before going to court with them, I'll go ahead and say it because why not? You know, they know it. I know it. No one else just wants to say it. Um, yeah. So anyhow, I'm going to get that stuff together and out to, to Jason here shortly, and then we'll be ready to get some more tents out. We've got, uh, I'm thinking we may have, I don't remember if we have a two or three left or not. I think maybe we have one, two or three left. Uh, we got two 303s, the medium size, that uh, one of them needs a little bit more extensive work. The other one is almost done. I think I just have to swap a part or two on it, and I think it'll be ready. I'm telling you, it had to have been an army tent because they screwed a lot of stuff on it up, you know, like putting the wrong parts in. Um, and there's only like two versions of the main poles that cross in various places, and in like three places, they put the wrong ones in. It's like, you only had two choices. Come on. But they put the wrong ones in. Or they put the right ones in upside it down. Or like something. Yep. yep. Uh, that sounds like an Air Force F up to me. Those guys are used to hotel rooms, not tents. Yeah. You know, for the, the if Air the Air Force, Force had done it, it would, it would have labels on it from the contractor that was hired to affect the repair. Um, and there are no labels on it. So... Um, the there was no crayon residue, off on it. right? Right. There was no crayon residue, so it that's clearly Marines was Marine. again. Right? Marines, right? That's what I'm saying. It, if the Marines did it, there there'd be you know little crayon shavings everywhere, or smear marks where their crayony hands got all over it. The um, rain could have washed that off. You don't know. Rain? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, it, it just seemed like it was just done wrong, and that really just implies army to me. Yeah, just saying, Mitch. Not your part of the army. I'm just, sure you're in the smart part of the army. Just have to use too much force. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anyhow, those tents are uh, coming together. Um, 
Most of them are ready. Man, we got some nice ones too. Some of the big ones, the 305s, one of them looked almost brand new. Jose, yeah. when we were putting it up, he's like, dude, I don't know if this one was ever put up. I'm pretty sure it was probably put up, but it could have been that it just had a little bit of little bit of dustiness in a few places from being packed up, you know, out and sitting outside. I think it was probably put up very briefly and, and then brought back down. But I'm telling you, it looks almost brand new. Like, I don't even want one of the big ones. It's too big. But I'm tempted to keep it because it looks so nice. But I really need to sell it. So so if anyone yeah. wants one, let me know. That one, all the windows and everything works fantastic. All the Velcros are still intact. The zippers, everything great shape. Uh, no no rub marks or, or worn out pieces or, or the fabric and stuff. It really, it really is in great shape. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, and if my wife ever kicks me out, maybe I'll just keep it so I have a place to live because I think it'd be good enough. I've got a liner for that tent too. So, yeah, that would be nice, actually. But hopefully she won't kick me out you anytime park soon. park the truck in the uh, tent and you can work on it in your free tent. Well, and that one's big enough that I could have the truck at one end and then put up a little interior divider wall and then have a living space at the other end. So... And he, has, and he has and he has yeah he has a yeah. chimney stuff on it as well so you can have a heater and and ac and everything going yeah and the lights i've got some lights that go in it man it's but yeah she can't hear this if she hears it she'll be like dude you're out of here um <laughs> yeah so i gotta be careful i don't want to put ideas in anyone's head all right so what what's everyone uh What's everyone excited about one, wanting to talk about now? We we are done with recently published. We're done with upcoming. Um, so now we can move into my favorite part of the program, which we lovingly refer to as shit shooting. So what kind of, uh, we already talked about that Texas has gotten rid of the mask requirement. I think that's awesome. And they're moving into the phase of opening everything up. Yeah. yeah that's um, what I hear. March 10th, uh, governor of uh, Texas said that they're going to allow all businesses to open a hundred percent. They can use their own guidance for masks, but there's not going to be a state mandate mask law in Texas. March 10th is the opening date. So they want to allow these businesses to open and operate. And so people can go to work and make money and live their lives and be happy. Crystal, don't sell me out. <laughs> I know it's going to be hard for you, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, truth be known, she knows I have a hobo yeah, village. She's been passed. to the warehouse and seen it. Uh, so, yeah. So, so let's see. What other exciting stuff? Yeah. other. I just remembered something else exciting. Um, I think it's the end of April. I'd have to go look on Facebook. I think I shared something about it this morning. The um, There's a military vehicle show that happens at the Denton Farm Park in Denton, North Carolina. It's kind of uh, mid, kind of kind of south central North Carolina uh, at the edge of the Uari National Forest area is this old farm park, an old far farm that they turn into a, a park. They do a bunch of a uh, bunch of neat things there throughout the year. And they have a train that goes around the property. You can actually ride on the train. It's really kind of neat. Um, the military vehicle show got canceled for because of COVID last year. And it looks like instead of rescheduling like they had hoped later in the year, they just had to leave it off the schedule and then schedule a new one for this year. Uh, and that's going to be their normal kind of late April time frame. That's another one where we typically take part of the camping team and the military vehicles team. Last year, they advertised it as the military vehicle and gun show. This year, I noticed it was just listed as the military vehicle show. So I don't know if they're also going to have a gun show there or not, but who knows? Um, it's a cool event, though, and it will be... Um, another event that we can take the battle wagon three to and spend the weekend. So another, another opportunity to put a command tent up. So I'm always excited about that. Is there a swap meeting and everything related to that uh, event as oh, well? Yeah. Or, or, yep. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. So, so what we've done in the past is, uh, I'll, I'll take the Humvee and fill the trailer full of Humvee parts and just kind of set them out. And, you know, as people want stuff, they can come get me money. And it, it's really an awesome setup when, when we're able to make that work. I wonder what that is. There's a uh, connection is unstable. It says, is everything looking okay to everyone? You kind of phased in and out a little bit on the last minute, but um, it sounded okay still. Okay. And and it's gone back up to saying connection is fairly good. So hopefully that's all right. And it uh, looks like we got a couple people watching on Facebook. That's nice. Thanks for joining us there. And then a few left uh, on YouTube. And uh, Michael Jordan has joined us. Or I'd say Larry Bird, but I don't know if TJ's quite as good as Larry Bird. Can he jump as high as Larry Bird? I'm not sure. Uh, bad TJ. No, that's fine. As long as you dunked on someone and made them feel bad, then we're okay with it. <laughs> yep. Should be used to being unstable. Yeah, I should. E everyone else is used to it, I think. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> That is, uh, that's what TJ's family calls him for some reason. I'm not sure. Was Kevin Love a basketball player? Is that like a pro basketball player or something? I, I don't watch the NBA. I have no idea. Aside from back in the 80s, uh, uh, Chicago Bulls, uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I was about done after that. <laughs> it's probably yeah. some kind of ball playing. I don't know. TJ and his sports balls. Sports balls. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. TJ's got a review in the works that he's been a, a little um oh apparently it is a sports ball player of some sort um i i passed up an opportunity i saw in the amazon vine program where i get some products to review uh uh some underwear they call it separate tech and it it keeps things separated we'll put it that way it's it's like your regular underwear and there's a hole that the, the port goes through and the beans kind of have their own compartment underneath. And in the hot summer, it keeps things from getting sweaty and sticking together. It looks absolutely ridiculous when you look at the, like the illustrations of like, really, that looks incredibly uncomfortable, but it's not. It actually is, is it works really well in the summer. And when I saw some more available to review, instead of claiming them for myself, I had them sent to TJ. And I thought, you know what? After I sent them, I was like, is that awkward when you send another dude like weird underwear that that cradles your junk a little differently than normal? And uh, it probably is. And, you know, if so, I apologize. But uh, but it my would have, it, was, it, they're it, awesome and you need to try them because he's in Florida where it's hot in the summer and stuff sticks together, I assume. So it's like, hey, if anyone would appreciate this, it's going to be TJ. So we shall see. At least you didn't send them the one that you already used and told them, hey, man, I, I found it fantastic. Use this one. <laughs> I offered them last time I was down there. I said, like, dude, you got to try them. And he's like, he's like, man, you didn't even wash them. Come on. I'm like, well. <laughs> Good point. Fair enough. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But that that's one that uh, you can go look at on Amazon. Uh, if you can figure out how to find Amazon reviews, uh, Gear Report has a page on Amazon. And we've got a few hundred things we re we've reviewed. And that underwear is in there. Um, everyone just remind TJ, please reach out to him at some time in the next couple of weeks and remind him we do not want pictures in this review. All right. It's fair. Sounds good. Yeah. I think that's very fair. Yep. Uh, so let's see what else is coming up on the, the Humvee. I think I talked about last week, some of the other additions, the things I've done to it. Um, uh, and I, and I did the geared hubs, checked all the, the uh, spindle nuts and changed the fluid and changed the gear oil and the differentials i've got i think just one more thing left before i can really start driving it a whole lot more i need to change the the transmission fluid because i haven't done that yet and that's the last big thing that i have as far as the the maintenance stuff and then i can start just driving the wheels off of it to to be sure it's ready to go to the event in a couple weeks 
we're in March already, aren't we? We're like yes. two weeks away from the gathering, the Palmetto State Armory and other big brands event that we've talked about before. So uh, I will was, I will was say that the again. the 20th, 21st? Is that the 20th or when is it? No, I, I'll say again that if uh, if you see any of the brands are interesting to you, let us know and uh, we will make a point. Uh, TJ and I are going to be there and uh, I don't I don't know if Caleb's going to be able to make it or not. Uh, I'm hoping, but that's not really looking all that likely. So so we are like right at two weeks away. Uh, so I got to get the truck ready and drive it a lot to be sure that it is ready to make the, the four hour trip down to that event. And we'll yeah. haul uh, the, the Humvee in a command tent and uh, and me and TJ will go down and schmooze with all of the people at the, the brands that are going to be involved there, which again, we can see are Palmetto, Taurus, Springfield, SIG, Glock, Microtech, North American Rescue, a bunch of other brands in here. Should be a pretty cool event. We're we're pretty uh, we're we're pumped about being there and uh, looking forward to a pretty cool time. Yeah, I feel it coming. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Bless you. Yeah, that's not the Rona, as far as anyone knows. All right, so we are 41 minutes in. I think we've covered everything on this end. Does anyone on the panel have anything that you would like to talk about before we get going? Yeah, who's ready for better, better weather in North Carolina? Yeah, definitely. I'm ready for things to dry out so we can actually move around without squishing and sinking into mud all over the place. That'll be good. Yeah. Uh, I, I've started my, my other pastime uh, this past couple of weeks and uh, it's been interesting uh, sloshing around uh, trying didn't, to find a little white ball that sinks in uh, underground because everything's wet. Didn't you just win a, a golf tournament? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Saturday. Ooh, way to go. Yeah, uh, I actually played two tournaments already. The first one I came tied for third place, and uh, uh, this past Saturday I won the won the tournament. Um, wow! It it is flighted, so I'm playing against people with my ability, which my ability is not professional ability. Ability, just to make it clear. Um, mm. But yeah, um, it's still it's still an accomplishment. I it's difficult in the end. <laughs> sure, sure. So is your cousin like shaking in his shoes yet? Uh, not yet. Um, he's actually competing uh, this weekend in Mexico. And uh, yeah, the difference in scoring between what he's going to do and what I would do is probably about, um, I don't know, 20 strokes difference. Wow. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He'll catch up to you eventually, though. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah. And and for for people who don't know, your cousin is is he on he's on one of the levels of the PGA Tour, right? He is on the secondary tours. He 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 goes back and forth in between the what they have they they call the Corn Ferry Tour and the PGA Latin America. Uh, it's kind of like the same thing as talking about the Mackenzie Tour that is up in Canada. So these are the. The guys that get to win the PGA Latin America, the Corn Ferry, and the Mackenzie Tour, uh, the same thing as the – there's a version on the European and there's a version on the Asia Tour. They get to feed into the PGA uh, if they if they win those tours. Hmm. Like, they are, are the points yeah. leader at, at the end of the season and stuff. So, yeah. Yes. Neat. So it's gimp underwear. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but it's comfortable. So you can call it whatever you want. It's it's good stuff. I'm actually planning on using it um, for the big backpacking trip this summer because I think it's going to do well in that. You said stroke. Dude, it's like he's 50 years old, half a century old, and he still has the mentality of like a 12-year-old. And, uh, and that's why we get along, frankly. Yeah crotchless silk 
bloomers is not far off from an accurate description, but y'all have to remember, um, we try to keep this show fairly family friendly. So let's just keep that in mind. All right. Um, we're right on the line and usually I'm the one responsible for that. Just like tonight is my camera on honcho. I'm not sure what that means. Um, so I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, why not? All right, so, folks. Yeah, I, I think we have for those. I did score uh, those uh, headlamps from Black Diamond. The uh, and those things were awesome. I did a uh, yeah. video on them, the ones that we were talking about last week. And uh, yeah, and you got them at the five ninety nine mistake price, right? I did. I woke up in the morning and uh, awesome. the first post I saw was yours. And when the price <laughs> came up, I said, "Wow!" I <laughs> even texted you like, "This has got to be a mistake." But they honored it, and uh, so I got uh, five of them, and uh, the uh, wow. they actually were really good. They're a great light. Yeah, cool. so that light was normally thirty five bucks, and I saw the they the Black Diamond sent me a note said, "Hey, we're doing a big sale tomorrow if you want to publish it to people," and it was supposed to be basically fifteen bucks. Uh, I think it was fifteen ninety eight actually is what it was supposed to be, and then so I posted it with that. Uh, so keep an eye on social media for Gear Report because sometimes we have opportunities where brands give us a heads up. Hey, we're going to have a really good sale. Let your people know because it's going to sell out quick. Well, I posted it and then Jason's like, dude, this was $5.99, not, not $15.98. And wow. sure enough, I loaded up and looked and it was. So I shared it. And you know, within a couple hours, I got a notes from people saying, nope, it's $15.98 now. They changed it. So they caught it eventually, but it's nice that they honored that mistake price and sent them to you. That was an absolute steal. Six bucks a headlamp for the the real black diamond stuff straight for the manufacturer. That was That was a deal. Yeah, I mean they're out of Salt Lake City. It's a great, uh, great company. It was cool. The thing that I really liked about it was the red uh, LED light, so you can protect mm -hmm. your night vision and not yep. uh, blind everybody around you if you want to see them uh, in the dark. So it was a very yeah. cool product. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yep. All right, folks. I think that is probably going to wrap it up for us for this evening. I would like to thank everyone. Um, in our inaugural uh, This Week of Gear Report um, broadcast on Facebook, we still got one person hanging in there, 10 folks with us live here on the YouTube side. So that, that's, that's not too bad, especially since we haven't had a lot of real content to talk about tonight. So thanks for squandering 47 and a half minutes with us this evening. You're never going to get that back, but, but we appreciate you wasting that time with us. All right, because we care. Um, I think uh, we're going to look forward to getting some things published for next week. So we have a little bit more to talk about there. Yeah. Isn't this exciting, Andy? We've got it set up and rolling. So Andy, since he's here, I got to mention, um, he will often, when he's on the show, he will do some overlays. He uses the open broadcast software, open broadcast or whatever it is, OBS. I used it a couple years ago. I set it up on the laptop and was was going to do a multicast that way and then i realized that to do it you have to have a really stout internet connection and i ran the speed test on mine and was like oh well that ain't gonna work you know i had it all set up like i figured out how to how to do it for free to multicast for free and if you know me you know that's exciting right um so I was really jazzed about that. And then I realized that I don't have strong enough internet to handle that. I said, well, looks like I'm giving StreamYard some money. And fortunately, um, had been talking to uh, the marketing folks over at Riton Optics. And they said, yes, we would absolutely like to sponsor this week at Gear Report so that you can multicast it. So, um, so thanks again to them for that. Uh, and actually, I think that the way this deal is going to work out, I, I'm probably going to be able to pick up a, a GoPro to use for some of our uh, other content as well because of the sponsorship. So uh, between that and our um, patrons, we, we don't we don't have the most active group on Patreon, but um, 
but the little bit that comes in every month, I've been kind of putting it aside. So Riton is picking up uh, the subscription for StreamYard, basically, and a little bit of uh, extra that I'll put towards that uh, GoPro. And then our patrons are basically picking up the rest of that GoPro. So um, that that's going to be pretty exciting. We're, we're going to be able to do some cool stuff with that. So thanks again to everyone for being here, for your support. Uh, free is better. I generally agree with that. Um, but, you know, it's also nice when, when people care enough to chip in and support the brand. So um, thanks again, everyone, for everything. Let us know what we can do for you. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Until then. See you at the ranch.